Kendall and Gwena Howie have been saving up to start a business, raising crickets to make cricket flour. From their savings, they will purchase 1,000 crickets at a cost of $69.50. They will buy 100 plastic bins, 104 liters each, at a cost of $23.99 per unit. They will purchase the soil to fill each bin to the 5 liter mark. Kendall and Gwena Howie will be adding small amounts of compost to their bins on a daily basis, changing the compost each day. They have made arrangements to lease a heated barn for $2,250 per month. The cost of the soil is $6.99 for a 30-liter bag. Kendall and Gwenahawi have signed a contract with President's Choice where they will sell their cricket flour to them for $8 for each 100-gram bag. 11.2 crickets are required to produce 1 gram of cricket flour. Kendall and Gwenahawi begin their business with 1,000 crickets. From their extensive research, Kendall and Gwenahawi have learned that a cricket population will increase by 14.2% every four days. Their plan is to allow the cricket population to grow for one year before converting all but 1,000 of the crickets into cricket flour and selling it to President's Choice. Kendall and Gwenahawi plan to take their profits from their sale of their cricket flour and invest it in a high interest, 16%, compounded six times per year, account for four years. Your job as a math consultant is to calculate Kendall and Gwenahawi's total amount made from their investment after four years. Remember that profit is defined as final gain, the difference between the amount earned and the amount spent in buying, operating, or producing something. Part one, let's figure out the cricket growth. We're told that Kendall and Gwenahawi begin their business with a thousand crickets. The crickets reproduce at a rate of 14.2% every four days. Not every one day, but every four days. So we have a period of four days. We're gonna use our growth formula, C of N is equal to C sub zero times one plus I to the BT because we have a period that's not equal to one. Our period is four. Our B is gonna be one over the period or one over four or 0.25. And then we're going to multiply that by time. We're doing this for one year. We're talking about four days. It's going to be for one year, which is 365 days. One quarter times 365 is 91.25. Then we come to our growth formula and we fill in everything that we know. We're starting with 1,000 crickets. One added to our growth rate is 14.2%, which is divide by 100, 0.142. We're adding that to one. We get 1.142. To the power of BT, 91.25. It's handy dandy calculator time. 1,000 times 1.142. To the power of... 91.25 and that gives us a huge number of crickets 182 million crickets 182 million 823,484.377 crickets but you can't have 0.37 of a cricket you either have a cricket or you don't have a cricket so we're going to round down. There's our 182,823,484 crickets. Part two, we want to sell the crickets. Kendall and Gwenahawi have signed a contract with President's Choice where they will sell the cricket flour to them for $8 for a 100 gram bag. It takes 11.2 crickets to produce one gram of cricket flour. We're going to take all of these crickets. We're keeping a thousand of them to continue the business of producing cricket flour. I'm going to subtract a thousand from that. That gives us 182,822,484. Let's figure out how many grams we have. So we're going to divide this number by 11.2. You can set this up as a ratio. You can say 11.2 crickets makes one gram. We have 182,822,484 crickets makes how many grams? X grams. I want to get X alone and on top, so I'm going to cross multiply it. So I'm going to bring it up here. I'm going to bring the 11.2 down here. We can just ignore the one because 11.2 divided by one is 11.2. We end up getting X is equal to 182,822,484 divided by 11.2. I want to take off the decimal. That number divided by 11.2 gives us how many grams of crickets we have. 16 million. 323,436 grams of cricket flour. Then we want to figure out, okay, let's divide that by 100 to figure out how many bags we have. One bag is 100 grams, and we want to know how many bags we're going to get. So I'm going to put Y bags is 16,323,436 and change grams. I'm going to cross multiply this way. So we have one times the 16 million. 
332,436 divided by 100, which as predicted, we're just going to divide by 100. The ratios will always get you to the proper operation, in this case, division by 100. That will give us, move the decimal point back twice. We want to know exactly how many bags, because you can't sell them a fraction of a bag. We're going to get 163,234.36071429 bags. You can't sell them a fraction of a bag. We're going to have 163,000 234 bags of cricket flour to sell to them. That's an awful lot of cricket flour. Each bag we are selling for $8. We're just gonna multiply this number by $8 and that's gonna be how much money we're making from the sale of the cricket flour. So that many bags times $8 is 1,305,872. Uh, a huge amount of money from crickets. Step three, we wanna figure out our profits before investing. All right, so our profits is going to be like how much money we made, and then we have to pay off our debts. From the cricket sales, we're going to get $1,305,827. And then our costs, to kind of go on how we plan to take the profits from the sales of the cricket flour and invest it in a high interest, 16% compounded six times per year account for four years. From their profits, not from how much they were given by President's Choice, right? So they have to remove their costs from their net sales to get their profits. From their savings, they were going to purchase 1,000 crickets for $69.50. So that's a cost. Um, they will buy 100 plastic bins, 140 liters each bin. They each cost $23.99. 100 times $23.99 is $2,399 for the bins. They will purchase the soil to fill each bin to the five liter mark. How much soil are they gonna need? They're gonna need five liters times 100 bins, 500 liters of soil. Then we know that a 30 liter bag costs $6.99. Bags of soil, we could divide. We need 500 liters of soil. They come in 30 liter bags. How many 30 liter bags are gonna fit into the 500 liters? That's gonna give us 16.6 repeating bags of soil. You can't buy 0.6 repeating bags of soil so we need to buy 17 bags of soil it's going to be 17 bags of soil at a cost of 6.99 each is $118.83. The cost of renting the barn, it's costing us $2,250 per month to rent a heated barn. We are gonna multiply that 12 months in a year, so multiply that by 12. It's gonna cost $27,000 to rent the barn. If we add all of this up, the total costs are $29,587.33. The profit is the 1,305,872 take away $29,587. 33, which gives us $1,276,284.67 in total profit. Step four, we're going to invest this. Kendall and Gordon Howie plan to take the profits from the sales of the cricket flour and invest it in a high interest, 16%, compounded six times per year, account for four years. Our growth formula that we use for compound investment, for investment compounded many times a year, is C sub n is equal to C sub zero times one plus i to the power of n, where n is m times t. m is the number of compounds per year times the number of years. m is six in this case, six times per year, and t is four years, which is six times four, which is 24. I is J divided by M, where J is the nominal rate or the annual compound interest rate, which is 16%. 16% as a decimal is 0 0.16, and we're gonna divide that by six. We have 0 0.16 divided by six gives us 0 0.02666666666, six repeating. Don't round this. If you do round it, you get a different answer. The total profits, $1,276,284.67 times one plus 0 0.026 repeating is 1.026 repeating to the power of N, which is 24. Handy dandy calculator time. Times 1.026 repeating to the power of 24 is equal to 2,400,000 $239.81, rounded to the nearest cent. That's a lot of money. After four years, Gwena Howie and Kendall have $2,400,239.81 that they have earned from their cricket flower business. That is it for the ES. Have a good day.